Today you are in for such a treat because I'm going to explain to you how, in the absence of any credible or legitimate safeguarding concerns, you can still manipulate the family court to throw your ex under the family court bus in three, yes only three, easy steps. I'm going to expose what I believe are the tactics that disgraceful family lawyers all too often use to cause conflict, acrimony and hate for what I suggest is for financial gain. Shameful, abhorrent and quite frankly sick lawyers who are allowed into the family courts with absolutely no duty of care to any child. So, how amazing is that? I bet you can't wait, particularly if you are a parent who is after revenge and have been wound up by your friends, relatives and through your own irrational thinking into a hysterical emotional state of hate. I bet your little venom sacks are starting to flow just thinking about it. But hold on. All of you on the receiving end of mudslinging, vindictive assertions and hate are shouting out, Phil, what are you doing? You were telling my ex how to throw me under a bus. Well, it's going to happen anyway, particularly if they have a lawyer. So you might as well know what's coming. To be forewarned is to be forearmed, as they say. But just before I expose the three steps to throwing your ex under the family court bus, let me run my excellent introduction. I am Philip Kedge, a retired police chief inspector and director of the Mackenzie Friend UK network. I have been a Mackenzie Friend layperson for over a decade and in this satirical blog all my views and opinions are entirely my own. Please help me by liking, subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Let's get straight to step one, becoming the resident parent. I know, I know, you want all the power to hold all the cards. This is essential because the second you, that you are the resident parent, the family court pendulum is firmly in your corner and that feels great. You are almost untouchable. Your parenting is not being scrutinised because, look at me, I'm the one who is already parenting. Kafkas and the court won't want to upset me because if I'm upset, that's going to upset the children. So when it comes to me, it's a kid gloves approach. Wrap me up in cotton wool and let's instead focus all the scrutiny on my ex because they have to prove their parenting. And whilst they are desperately trying to do that, I can, from my resident parent family court podium, do everything I can to undermine it. This is going to be so much fun. Now, the court is likely to encourage you to attend the separated parent information programme that encourages you to co-parent and use phrases such as our child instead of my child, because your child is not a possession. It's best to go, but you don't want to really listen to all that nonsense. Possession is after all nine tenths of the law and you are not going to even offer up a tenth of your little five-year-old Johnny, are you? He is yours, all yours and nothing but yours. You are not giving an inch. No way, Jose. So, are you ready for step two? I bet your little tail is rattling with anticipation. Step two. 
Make sure that you tell Kafkas and the court that little Johnny, remember, only five years of age and so easy to manipulate, has affinity, alignment and attachment issues. Don't worry, your family lawyer should know exactly what to say and do. Let's, however, keep this next bit a secret between ourselves, okay? Did you know that Kafkas, in their professional internal guidance called the Child Impact Assessment Framework, doesn't even class affinity or attachment issues as parental alienation? Unbelievably, when it comes to affinity and alignment issues by a child with one parent over the other, Kafkas actually explains that this is a naturally occurring preference that can occur during or after separation or from the other parent's minimal involvement. Well, that's like Christmas come early. All you have to do is to ensure that your ex has minimal child contact as possible at every stage of the court proceedings and make little Johnny attached or aligned to you because that isn't likely going to be seen as parental alienation. You know those little special cuddles, those little words like I'm the only one who really loves you and you are so brave going to see the other parent and I'm going to miss you. Are you going to miss me? And don't forget that little tear. I love this next bit. Kafkas are amazing. They state an alliance may occur because of the child's indignation at the departed parent's behavior and resistance to seeing that parent may be entirely understandable. You can have so much fun with that. Keep blaming the other parent for everything and make little Johnny hate them. According to Kafkas, a child's indignation towards the departing parent can be entirely understandable. You are home and dry. And whilst you are at it, why not throw in a sprinkle of attachment anxiety? Little Johnny needs me. He is anxious and upset. We have to take things at little Johnny's pace. Contact is too much at the moment and we need to slow it down. And if you are ever challenged, just say, I'm doing everything I can to promote contact. Perfect. You are now cooking on gas, setting things up nicely for step three. And just before we get there, how about this for a little tactical below the belt hit? At handovers, where Johnny has to unfortunately stay with your ex, don't forget to tell Johnny how brave he is. Give little Johnny lots of kisses and cuddles so that your ex can see. And then as little Johnny walks towards them at the last minute, just when he is about to reach your ex, call him back for one last hug. It's a classic and works every time. Little Johnny should now be confused, crying and upset. Indeed, so upset that you need to consider whether contact should happen at all. And just when you think things can't get any better, your ex, in total frustration, suddenly shouts and swears at you. That's domestic abuse. You are now a victim of domestic abuse. But the icing on the cake with that sweet cherry on top is that they shouted in the presence of little Johnny. So that is, wait for it, drum roll, please. Child abuse. It's time to stop all contact entirely, run straight back to your lawyer and get a non-molestation order. Genius. 
Let's move on to the third step and my favourite. Step three. Thanks to the Domestic Abuse Act of 2021, we now have a definition of domestic abuse, which in layperson terms means that any behaviour that can ever be interpreted as being abusive between two connected people is domestic abuse. And any abusive behaviour towards a child or seen or heard by a child is child abuse. Thanks to the recent Court of Appeal judgment in the case of A, that when a teenager farted on his father and the father responded with expletives, the first trial judge put it down to an understandable response by the father. But the Court of Appeal overturned it and said the father's behaviour was not understandable and that the definition of domestic abuse should have been applied. Not only that, the Court of Appeal judge determined that this incident was worthy of a fact-finding hearing, likely to be of relevance to future contact considerations. It's like a gift from the heavens. So, Make sure you go back through every email, every text that may be inappropriate, every instant when your ex swore, raised their voice, slammed a door, became frustrated, told the children off, perhaps even smacked the children, called you names, got drunk, forgot to put suntan lotion on little Johnny. It doesn't matter how trivial you think the incident is, just get that list down, hand it to your solicitor who will then happily turn it into a statement of at least 20 to 40 sides of allegations and assertions of abuse and coercive control. It's like a perfect scenario, all coming together at once. And just to make sure that it gets through the system, don't forget to ensure that your solicitor has added those assertions and feelings that no one can disprove, such as how you have had to tread on eggshells and felt controlled and manipulated, anxious and belittled, ignored and undervalued, guilty and ashamed, gaslighted, unsupported, isolated, and powerless. Honestly, don't worry, there is a list of about 20 regularly used ones that you can choose from. Your solicitor should have them on cut and paste. And that's it folks, any truth doesn't actually matter. All you have to do is to push those three family court buttons and the family court bus will come around the corner pick you up, treat you as the victim that you say you are, and then run your ex over for you. Their path forward from this point on is a total nightmare. I just want to now congratulate you. You have successfully completed the three-step course of how to, in the absence of any legitimate safeguarding issues, Throw your ex under the family court bus. Let's do a quick recap. Step one, you have to become the resident parent. Step two, ensure little Johnny becomes attached and aligned to you. And step three, throw every possible trivial instant of bad behavior at your ex. Some will stick and the court will hopefully label your ex a domestic abuser, but better still, the gold medal, a child abuser. But what about little Johnny, I hear people say? Won't he be harmed by the hate and acrimony? Well, 
Let's not worry about that because this is all about you and your victimhood and your revenge. I know, I know little Johnny may have his childhood destroyed, may reach teenage years self-harming, needing serious mental health support, and one day may abuse his own wife and children. But don't worry about that. That's a long way off. And one day you can show him the court papers and orders that states that you were right. Okay, perhaps don't try to explain it to him when he is only five years of age, a tad young, but perhaps next year. Anyway, I doubt that you will be able to stop yourself telling little Johnny everything you did to protect him. You can be so proud. So if I was a family lawyer, what would I now be thinking? Well, how wonderful I am. How much I am looking forward to my Christmas bonus for a job well done. And then on to the next case. Thanks for listening. If you are at the receiving end of this scenario and being thrown under the family court bus by your ex, please contact me by booking an appointment. Don't delay. Go to www.contactfield.co.uk and book a free consultation right now. Secondly, if you are the resident parent and you have a family lawyer who is pushing you towards a path of hate and actually you don't want that path, then also please contact me today. I can help you get off that path so that you can move forward to build bridges and where your child is not being significantly harmed. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.